Good evening, folks. This is Diamond from the Oppenheimer Ranch Project on Saturday evening, October 7th at 10 p.m. Mountain Time, 2017. Tonight we're going to be talking about the possible Yellowstone supervolcano eruption. Here's a map, and it's for illustrative purposes only. If the supervolcano were to erupt, the exact zones would depend on wind, time, direction of shot, etc., but let's get into the headlines and the data. An earthquake swarm of almost 2,500 tremors at Yellowstone supervolcano since June is one of the longest on record. So 2,500 tremors since June, June, July, August, September, October. That's a four month period. And let's look at the data. So here's the data they've been collecting since uh, this 1970. And there was a swarm in uh, 1987 of 3,000 in the year. And then in 2011, 2,500. And they've just had 2,500 in four months. So that will be up here already, plus whatever happened before, plus whatever's going to happen towards the end of the year. So this is an unprecedented spike potentially here. And we'll have to keep watching this. Now, as far as the ground movement is concerned, this is the current data of the ground surface movement in that area. And there is nothing anomalous. So that red zone is this year. Here you see current. And there's nothing anomalous about the amount of ground motion in the Yellowstone area since they've been uh, keeping records in 2001. So that's good news. So the ground isn't moving a lot, which means there's not a lot of magma moving. Okay, so what else are they saying here? University of Utah seismograph stations have monitored 2,475 tremors. 115 earthquakes were reported during September. The largest quake during the period was 2.3. The largest swarm ever in 1985. So more than 3,000. There's that data. I'll leave you links to all this. So Yellowstone is a super caldera, uh, which is a, just an enlarged giant version of a continental volcano. And what I mean by that, these super calderas are massive. So here's the Yellowstone Plateau. Here's Mount St. Helens for scale. This is a very violent um, stratocone volcano with andesite lava, which is high silica and very violent when it erupts. And this is the ash plume from 1980. Here's the Yellowstone Plateau and the three recorded re eruptions that we know about. So the most recent is actually the largest ash bed, and it's called the Lava Creek Ash Bed, and that's from the 640 kilo year ago eruption. And then uh, just a little before that, 700,000 years ago, the Long Valley Caldera Blue, and that's this hash line. That's the size of that ash plume. And then we have the Mesa Falls ash bed at 1.3 million, the smallest of the Yellowstone eruptions. And then the Huckleberry Ridge ash bed, which is the 2.1 million year eruption. So we're due for an eruption based on this time frame. So there's a heads up there. There's just another picture. I'll leave links to all of these so you can peruse them. Another thing that just happened, uh, in, uh, data from uh, some cameras that Yellowstone holds. They spotted a UFO hovering there in June, but they just got the data uploaded. So you can read about this UFO and actually see the video here. Um, so check it out. It's kind of pretty cool. So I'll leave you links to the UFO uh, captured June 9th, which also happens to be the full moon. Um, so check out the video and judge for yourself. Um, and here is a, just a generalized map if you want to know where a safe area to live is. I'm living right here at the Four Corners area. And based on all my other considerations for the Grand Solar Minimum, I find this area to be the safest. So you make the call yourself uh, in the whole country. This is from the USGS, and this is their actual predictions for ash fall. I'll leave you links to this. 
Um, they actually put this out for a Yellowstone eruption asphalt. And you can see that where I am, I would get 30 to probably 30 to 50 millimeters of ash based on this assumption map. So I'll leave you that. And then let's just for scale, here's the Mount St. Helens eruption and the amount of ejecta compared to Pinatubo and compared to Tambora for scale. And then you, we can't even go to Yellowstone here. We have to go to another scaler. And so here you see again Pinatubo versus St. Helens versus Tambora and then Long Valley, which I talked about earlier on this pic, uh, in this picture, this Long Valley caldera eruption. And then Yellowstone 1 and 2. And this is the most recent Yellowstone eruption volume of pumice and ash. Massive. Massive. Now, what I think that we're uh, most worried about, because based on the data, there's not a lot of ground movement there. So I don't think there's a lot of magma moving under the ground. But what I do think is shifting is a lot of hydrothermal liquids. This is a huge hydrothermal area. And the most recent volcanic activity was just 13.5 thousand years ago, right before uh, the cosmic event that caused the oceans to rise during the last coming out of the last ice age and so this Yellowstone supervolcano doesn't have to erupt as a volcano with ash and pumice it can just merely erupt as a super hydrothermal event so if you guys know what Old Faithful is it's one of these hydrothermal geysers that are here at um, in Yellowstone <coughs> okay so it would be the same kind of event only in a magnitude of 10,000 times that would shoot liquid into the sky in ash and vapor in vapor it would be huge amounts of water vapor that it would uh, be amazingly catastrophic as far as the climate is concerned so one of these hydrothermal events could happen and it would shoot so much water into the stratosphere that uh, it would wreak havoc on the climate now, if you have ever been to Yellowstone, there's tons of different hydrothermal vents and pipes, and you can uh, walk right up to them. Um, and literally, there's geysers that erupt steam on a regular basis because what happens is the aquifer fills the, the superheated hole, and it takes time to boil, and then it boils, and then it pressurizes and reaches a, a boiling point, and then it shoots out of the surface. Now, the same thing could be happening at depth, at a very deep depth, where huge amounts of water are pouring into the aquifer and starting to boil and build pressure. And that in, in a gigantic scale, they would erupt. And that would be less catastrophic for the country as a whole. But that could be, would be my uh, suggestion as the most likely type of eruption to happen in our lifetime, a hydrothermal event. Uh, and one thing to leave you on, someone has already predicted uh, a Yellowstone eruption, August 21st, 2021. Guys, I hope you like what you saw. If you have any questions, uh, leave them down below in the comments. Thanks for watching. Be safe.